Hey everyone, welcome to the LJ Effect Podcast, affecting your mind and body to be your most authentic self. So today I have a young content creator, 22 years old, Kruger Burton from New Zealand. He's the owner of his coaching business, Visionary Man, helping men, building stronger men, self-improvement, and red pill truth, as well as a spiritual guru. Kruger, what's going on, my man? Okay, good, brother. I'm going really good, man. It's been a good day so far. Had a bit of a good good chat before, but uh, yeah, man, it's going really good. Yeah, dude, it's it's the end of my day. Um, all I can tell you is that this weekend uh, we got snowed on over here in the states. So I think you're bathing in the sun over in New Zealand. It's it's always summer there, right? That is, that is, that is. <laughs> yeah. So like average is what like ninety degrees year round, right? Let me check. 80? I think it's like twenty right now. It's getting up there, man. I'll just double check. It's getting about... Well, when it gets up to the hundreds over New Zealand. Well, now we're getting to 22, 22, 22 degrees today, which is you guys are on Fahrenheit. So I think it'll be about 50, 50. So it'll be about what? So about 50 Fahrenheit, I think. I believe. Okay. I'm not too good with the Imperial metric, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, because our metric systems are different. I mean, you yeah. were asking me earlier about like what my weight was for my competition. I'm like, uh, yeah, I can't calculate the kilograms but i was like 145 <laughs> yeah man but i'll just oh man i'm just gonna bloody close this window there's a bloody weed eater outside here yeah. weed eater oh no way that's all right man we're mobile with kruger everybody the, the full the full <laughs> focused experience you know <laughs> yeah no for sure helps with the sound um i noticed that there was a bit of a difference when I had my window open. So I'm just yeah, man. careful with that, you know, the lawn care people. So those fuckers. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so Kruger, why don't you go ahead and tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, tell me about yourself. Tell me about, uh, tell me about like where the beginning of visionary men started, even before it became visionary men. How about we start there? Yeah, man. So basically that all come back down to my story, sure. really, to be honest, that'll come back down to really just where I, well, this all started. Sure. I feel like we can every, start guy there. Goes, every guy goes through like a switch. I made a Facebook post the other day actually on this mm. and it's funny people at my age, um, before all of this, I'll give a bit of a foreground because I feel like people need to understand like the switch, like the switch that everyone doesn't hit or they do hit. And I feel like for me and my experience that this is like a switch everyone hits, whether they're called to lead, like you've hit the switch. I know you've hit the switch. I know a lot of people you've talked to have hit the switch. It's like a point mm -hmm. where when you're in your 20s, 18, 19, you know, there's a general, you're going out partying, you're going out drinking, mm -hmm. and you take drugs and all this shit. And then eventually you get to this point where you start questioning that. You're like, surely this just can't be it. Surely I'm not just out here chasing females, taking drugs doing all these things just to do this. This is just life. But then I started questioning it. And it's like my intuition or something higher was speaking for me to, to do something else, hmm. which was weird, which was interesting. I found quite interesting because it was like I was being pulled in, a, in another direction in a sense from something higher or, or, or I'm not too sure, but hmm. I was being called to go in another direction and my, my intuition was speaking. And um, I had a switch where I was like, okay, okay cool. Um, I've got to improve on my life. I've got, I'm called to lead. This can't just be my, my life, just drinking, partying, chasing girls, and living that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many guys going down that, that route. And this is what I mean. I made a video the other day saying men are doomed without purpose. Mm -hmm. And so many men need purpose inside of their life. So that's the foreground of, you know, the switch. I feel like everyone has to have that. Everyone has to understand that, that there's a switch inside of that. If you're going through that period, just understand that that's actually good. There's a dark void all over you. It's like you start questioning things. I don't even know this 18 year old comment in, in, about it. He said he was going through this dark void. And I found it quite interesting because a lot of men go through this, but they stay in that place. I know people that are still 30 at 35 that are still going through this, mm. but if I was to be real, man, if I was to truly be real and authentic, like, like I said, the intention before this was, you know, where it all started, man, like 
so many guys go through um, trauma inside their life. Mm. You know, I didn't have a mate. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to say like my upbringing was bad, but you know, I was abused. I, I got bit up. My mum had schizophrenia. You know, all these things that on my as when I grew up, they they affected me unconsciously. You know, right. I never had a father when father figure growing up. So I, I was, I was always looking for other people or to validate me. I didn't know how to be a man. And that really took a toll on me growing up, you know, uh, we could go heavily into that, but I feel like the main thing I want to take away from, you know, the upbringing was me not having a father figure in my life, mm -hmm. me having a very, my family, my parents in and out of my life. And that led to a place where unconsciously it would have affected me. You know what I mean? It would have affected me in a way that I would have unconsciously not have noticed. So when I got into like uh, relationships with girls, meeting new people, I never really had a rough time making friends, but when it came to females, oh my God, <laughs> Jesus, like, <laughs> it was like every time I got into a relationship with a girl, like a pseudo girl, it would just end like a shit show, man. You know, they always say the nice guy finishes last, but I, I, I got to the point where it was just, you know, you're putting this female on such a pedestal that you, you believe she's everything. Yeah. I think right? a lot of guys go through that, man. A lot of guys go through that. And I did too, you know, just thinking that they were too good for me. Like, like that I didn't deserve that. Like I didn't deserve that love. That was, that was kind of a place where I was at in my life. At, at one point, you know, and uh, it, it took me a long time to, to reassure myself. And first of all, it, it took me, it took me to a place to where I needed to reassure myself that I, I needed to, um, to really work on loving myself first before I could actually love somebody else, you know, so it all kind of started back with that. And then also realizing the second thing was getting into that aspect and getting into that phase where like, okay, I know that I'm good enough for a woman. I know that I'm good enough for somebody to be in my life. I shouldn't put them on a pedestal. I shouldn't have to make them a goddess over my life. And then whatever she says, it's, it's the word, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it does not have to be that way. We can, we can have a good, healthy relationship. Like I don't have to, I don't have to worship them and think that, oh, I'm just the filthy little peasant at the bottom of Mount Olympus, you know, it's not like that, you know, and it should be like that. And uh, I think a lot of guys go through that phase in their life where they just don't think that they are good enough. And a lot of that stems from first, not love, not loving themselves like what, like what I just touched on, but also, so it starts out with them not loving themselves and having that self love for themselves to be good enough to be with somebody else. And then two, knowing that you are good enough for somebody in your life and yeah. you got to respect yourself enough to go out there and put yourself out there. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to have somebody take your love for granted. So it's also sticking up for yourself and making sure that, you know, the person you're going to be with is someone that really wants to be with you, that truly wants to be with you. Otherwise you're just going to have to, you know, meet somebody else that wants you for you versus that last person that just only liked parts of you you know, things from you, essentially, you know? 100%. And I feel like guys are in this trap. Definitely in this trap. You're touching on a lot of gold there, bro, because people are, so many guys are in this trap. It's just like, yeah. you want to talk about relationships, man, and go down that route. It's like, so many guys are in that trap where they will, they'll get into a relationship, they'll pursue one girl. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, you've got one girl. This one girl likes you. You don't have any purpose. You're not working on yourself in the gym. You're not working on your finances. You're not working to become better. Mm -hmm. And you're going to default to making her the primary focus of your life, which is what happened to me, mm -hmm. which has happened to me so many times. Like I would make a female the primary focus of my life because I didn't have any hobbies or goals inside of my life. Every man needs purpose. Mm -hmm. Every man needs purpose because if you don't have purpose, you're going to default to make it a woman, the primary focus of your life. And I'm, a lot of people talk about this, but you know, from my personal experience, I'll share my personal experience. 
you know, yeah. I was, yeah. was head over heels for this girl. Mm. It was about 2018. Fully head over girl. Fully head over heels. Would do anything. Mm. Would do anything for her. Literally. I would have done anything for her. I would have I paid trips for us to go everywhere. Tapped into all my savings. Um, flew, because we did long distance. So I, was, I was flying in and out like two hours from here. Oh, wow. About an hour from here. All the time. Whoa. Flying in and out to see her. Um, you know, we were still committed to making it work. Mm. And all of a sudden, you know, I was working on my business at the time, which was a person, I was a personal trainer at the time. And I was very, you know, like when you go into that sort of game, you start getting into this whole entrepreneurial lifestyle. So you're, you're, you're working on your finances. And then I started getting into the online game, uh, mm-hmm. creating wealth online. And as I went into this relationship, it was like, my purpose was this. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, now I'm starting to focus on this girl of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And now I'm starting to forget about all that. Yeah. And now she's becoming the primary focus of my life. And the Alchemist, the book Alchemist by Paul, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but Paul Coelho or something like that. He, he mentions this in his so. book. Yeah, mentions, mentions the book. Mentions this, mentions this in the book. And I started making her the primary focus of my life. And all of a sudden, um, she starts being distant. She starts being emotional, um, breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together. And this was really fucking with me mentally. I was like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything for this girl. Mm-hmm. Buying her things, um, flying down to see her, you know, sending her roses and shit like that. Doing everything, bro. Everything to just, you know, because that, that's what we're told. We're told that this is what you should do and this is what they love. But um, right. <laughs> at the end of the day, like we realize that, you know, as, as we have great content creators today that make, make us aware of this, you know, we're not, we're blessed to even have me be sharing this story because guys need to wake up to this stuff. I was chasing this girl and it broke me down so hard that, which I'm thankful for, it broke me down so hard that, you know, I was contemplating suicide. I even attempted suicide from that. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Take me that low. Wow. That low. That's a low point, man. So low, like to, to three times, three times over a girl. So that was like December 20, 19 or 18 last year. So when you go into 2019, that's when I found all the drugs, the alcohol, the partying, um, everyone goes down that route. I went down a path of darkness, yeah. drugs every single weekend. And all that I could think about was her. You know what I mean? Like all I could think about was her, about it was just consuming, consuming. And this is the thing, like guys just need to learn that she isn't the primary focus of your life. She shouldn't be the primary focus of your life. Right. You should have purpose. You should have goals inside of your life. What is purpose? What is goals? It's not something that you just do during the weekday. It's, it's, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. You know, now that I'm wear, weary of this, I understand that, you know, she's just there to compliment my life. We hear all these red pill things all the time. You know, she's just there to compliment your life. And, you know, that's one of the things, you know, going through breakups, they're traumatic, like they're traumatic experiences, but they're like the most growth is in them. You know, you realize the biggest lessons inside of those moments inside of your life. And that was one of the biggest moments that I ever had for me to just go, okay, cool. I was doing personal training. I was doing the entrepreneurship before. Why, do you, why have you stopped doing that? Why the fuck have you stopped doing that? you got so much potential and my intuition's screaming at me right now. So all I did, all I fucking did when I was in that point of my life where I had that, that switch that I was talking about before right. was I grabbed a fucking journal. <laughs> French. I just grabbed a journal and um, I started writing my goals down. I just started writing. And I remember the first, ju- first time I journaled, I have the journal. I, I got the first date, it's July 17. Mm. I-, I remember it clearly, man. Like, and it was like three things that you had to do today. And it was like a cold shower, go for a run, and a train or something like that. Mm. And um, I was writing down each day of like my semen retention journey. And, you know, it just started to be this everyday habit. And then that just started to ripple onto things. And um, man, eventually I was like, okay, cool. 
how can I give this to other people? Because man, I was on an all time fucking high in that point in my life. And I was like, you know, ain't no female going to knock me down off the side, man. Like I've, I've, I've got this. I've like, I've, I've found love for life. I found like a love for myself that I've never experienced ever in my life. I got to give this to people. Some people just don't want to change, you know, mm. some people just don't want to change. No, you're right. No, dude, you're right. Like, uh, every man needs purpose. That, that is gold right there too, man. Like, like you said before how, and how we've talked, how you've talked to me about gold. It's like, when I think of man, masculine energy, and I think of purpose, I think back to the book, uh, the way the superior man by David data and how every man does need to be on a purpose. It's a part of the masculine energy. We weren't made to be just like women. Women weren't made to be just like men. Maybe this is some red pill truth as well. Um, the furthest I've gotten into the red pill was talking about, uh, reading or I've read Rello Tomasi's the rational male. Um, he's got a series of books. I've only read that one. Uh, I think that's like the first of two, the first of three. So it's a trilogy. Then there's two more books and, uh, listening to that, um, opened my eyes to what, you know, red pill is and, and was as well as there's also a book out there as well from a collaboration of forums. And I may be stating that wrong too, but I'm not too sure. But anyway, purpose goals, you know, it's like that question they asked, you know, what is that, you know, how, how does that manifest, you know, and really it is as, as simple as a daily activity that you're doing daily, something that you're doing daily, as well as your lifestyle. You know, it, it ties into that so, so fundamentally, they're so intertwined with what you're doing every day and what your lifestyle is, you know, and that, that's what it's a part of. And really between the masculine and the feminine, the relationships don't work if the man is not masculine and the woman is not feminine. Those polarities need to be there, not only to polarize each other, to have them bounce off of each other, but they eventually meld kind of like, um, I don't know what the alchemist really talks about in, in that book, but that's a form of alchemy in, in the way that I see it. You know, they, they bond together because of their polarities. You know what I'm saying? And men and women are always going to think so differently between each other. We're always going to have different ways of how we handle our emotions, how we handle um, logic, how we handle reality and our perception of things. But really men having their purpose keeps them alive. And really without it, you got one foot in the grave and one foot on land. You know, you really just got one foot in the grave if you don't have your purpose. And so that turns into that driving force. It's something that they can use their testosterone for and that we can use our testosterone for, for to put that, push that energy in, into that, you know, it's a form of sexual transmutation where instead of, you know, having sex or fapping, you know, with the no fap lifestyle, we, uh, we put that energy into the work, into the grind, into what we're aiming at, into our goals, you know, and we manifest what we're creating with that energy using that masculine energy. And that's what masculine energy is. It's, it's a breaking through barriers. It's penetrating the world, penetrating your woman. It's, it's drive. It's, overcoming fear, overcoming challenges, breaking down barriers, breaking down walls. You know, I'm speaking in these allegories. Um, you have a lot of drive, you know, to, to accomplish the mission, to accomplish the goal, to be set out on your purpose, your life path. And women complement men with their femininity, with, with being who they are. And that's what makes them beautiful. That's what makes women beautiful to me is a feminine spirit is, a feminine, uh, feminine polarity. And what that, and what I mean by that is, um, obviously they're going to dress like a girl. They're gonna, they're going to wear a dress. They're going to be prim. They're going to be proper. They're going to dress up. They're going to maybe put on a little bit of makeup, maybe not too much. Maybe they just have natural beauty. And generally every, every woman has natural beauty. Women are beautiful to look at. They're authentic creatures, you know, in, in that aspect with their beauty, we are very visual creature creatures as men. And so without that vision, you know, we can't accomplish the mission. So 
for us being visual, very visual creatures, we also have to have that, have that mission for our purpose, that vision for our purpose in our minds, you know, and women get to complement our mission, you know, like they get to complement us and our lifestyle and what we're living and what we're pursuing and what we're doing, you know. And so when they're in that submissive stage, when they're in that submissive state as a person, being feminine and having femininity, that's what really makes us feel better. We can relax in our masculine presence, in our masculine state, um, even as alpha males, you know, and uh, we can be around that, that feminine woman and we can just let the problems, uh, the problems and the pressures of the world just kind of melt away when you're around that person. Like, at least that's how it's supposed to be. Um, so really those polarizing, uh, those, <laughs> those polarizing energies um, need to be uh, opposites to attract each other. And so um, that's what femininity can do for a man is it can melt away his stress, it can melt away his, uh, his, str his struggle, maybe his pressure a little bit by her just being a woman, by her just being a girl. And then he can kind of re-collaborate and then when he's ready to go out the next day and wake up the next morning and go on to the next day, boom, he's ready to get right back on the ground. He's ready to get back right, right back on his purpose, you know. Um, but really, in essence, the question is, and I think that's why a lot of men get deterred by all these things, you know, like what you talked about with your lifestyle, you know, drugs, clubbing, alcohol, women, we could even just call it the aspect of lust, just chasing that, chasing that high. It's been all like that, yeah. Ch chasing that body high, you know, like uh, that, that's why we need purpose because otherwise we're going to get deterred by that and by what the world's going to offer us, you know. And so those are kind of the bad things that the world will offer you, but there are many great things that are really good things that the world can offer you if you just get your mindset on what you want to do because nobody can choose your, nobody can choose your purpose for you. And uh, if I can talk about this real quick too, before we go on to the next thing, like uh, I was watching this video by uh, my friend on his Instagram page and it was uh, talking about Will Smith. Um, and Will Smith was talking about like, you got to just go after what you're, you're chasing. Nobody can decide what your purpose is, but you got to take your shot. You know, like you got to take your shot. I think that's what the video was called. You got to take your shot at what life is giving you and offering you, but nobody can tell you what your purpose is. Nobody can tell you what the meaning of your life is going to be because a lot of the times we have to find that meaning within ourselves. And I, I believe in a higher power though too, personally for myself. And so I believe that that higher power, <laughs> yeah, mate, I believe that that higher power gives you that purpose. And over time with that relationship with that higher power, this is my spiritual side, like they reveal that to you. They reveal that those uh, passions in your heart, you know, they reveal what, what you are truly chasing after. And so that's, that's what he stated in that video. They're like, nobody can tell you what your purpose or your drive is. And at the same time, you got to take that shot too. Even when all the odds are against you, if you're down in your corner, if you're down in your luck, maybe you're in a bad spot financially or you're homeless, but you've got these opportunities out from you that are just screaming like, Hey, take me, take me. Like, I'm here for you. This, this will get you by for the time. Or this is like, Hey, it, it's a personal, uh, maybe it could be a personal training job. For example, like, Hey, there's an opening here and they need trainers. Oh man, I got my certification. I got a lifetime of experience, at least 20 plus years. And I, I have the credibility with what I've been studying. There's your shot. There's your shot. You know, sometimes you just got to take your shot and then men can get into their purpose, you know? Exactly, man. I love what you said there, bro. That's so cool. <laughs> you've been on a flow there, man. You've been on a flow there. You a lot of gold. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I did. I did kind of get to that flow state, man. I love that flow state. I love that you flow state. Flow, man. There's a <laughs> lot to go down to, like I came up with spiritual. Um, you talked about um, the feminine and the masculine. I really love that. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend that book, man, if you haven't read it yet. Yeah, yeah no, I like that. I've been really diving into it. Um, if we want to talk spiritual. Yeah, we can go on that. I ask myself, you know, what is love? What is, what is truly love? You know, if you really want to mm. make an impact in this world, right. really make an impact in people's, in, in people's lives, you really got to understand um, self-love, I believe. Because mm -hmm. if you can understand self-love, the divine order, the source, God, whatever you believe, whatever entity you want to put on it, will align things in there for you, but you got to understand what is love? Like truly what is love? 
And I've been getting into these interesting places, man, when I'm going for all my nature walk at the park. Oh, nice. I go, I go for a walk at the park sometimes like twice a day. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay, every week. Yeah, yeah okay. like every day, every day, bro. Every, oh, every, every day. day. Okay, so every day during the week. Okay, gotcha. And um, one thing that I realized is I've been tapping into states of gratitude. I'm like, cool, that's easy. What about love? Like, you know, that's a, when you can really open your heart up to love, you can really make an impact in this world. You can really come from that place. People feel love, but people have so much blocks towards it because we are in such a live in such a society where everything's so singular and, and, and apart. It's not this polarity mm. but when we can come and vibrate in a, in a state of love, oneness, wholeness, I believe that, you know, there's giving, there's receiving and it's like a flow. It's like when you're speaking, it's like, it's like a flow, man. <laughs> this is the way yeah. I see it. It's like, it's like a flow. It's like a give and receive and it's like good and bad. It's like all polarity is just one. And like when you truly like bring it all together and like all in oneness, I believe that, you know, what is judgment? Like one guy had it on the head. I think it was, I can't remember who it was. Love is the abstinence of all judgment, mm. right? So yes, there's you would have to say like, you know, if there's no judgment, what does, does that mean there's no judgment on yourself or judgment on others? True, it is. Because when there is abstinence of judgment, it's all welcoming of judgment when you welcome and open the flow of energy, it's all flow. It's all energy, man. It's just like you're allowing love. Like when you just allow someone to like go, just, just, you know, offend you or you allow that person to say things, you just welcome it and just love that because like you will, you'll probably be able to provide opportunities for, for them in the future. They may, you may provide them a job in the future. You may change their life in the future. Yeah. And when you can come from that place of just, you know, no judgment and just allow that flow of love and goodness, and just allow it, you can get into this place of state of just, man, love for life, man. And like just seeing the world as a, like a child, you just mm -hmm. look and it's just like, everything's just is how it is. Mm -hmm. It's flowing how it should be. And when you can get into the state, it's just like, things move, man. Things just move fast. You know, you're not supposed to be anywhere. You know, I'm sure for yourself, sometimes you get up in this mentality, gotta get stuff done, gotta get stuff done, but you can come into this place. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, bro, it's, it's powerful, man. And you can truly, I truly believe when you're in this place, people feel that. People truly feel that. And if your goal uh, for anyone that's watching is to make an impact, I believe that you should learn how to self-love and love yourself because people are going to feel that. You're able to give that to others. And I truly, truthfully believe that whether the people believe it or not, this is what they're seeking for, self-love, acceptance. And when you can truly open your heart up to it, man, I believe that, you know, there's no other answer. It's just, there's no answer. You know, when you let go of the answer, if you let go of there being an answer, that's the, that's the answer. You know, it's, it's all, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, that, that, that last thing that you said, that kind of reminded me of this, I think I made posts on it, but it was, uh, when you let go of the world, the world change the world has to adapt to your change i think so uh and i'm trying to remember the post it, it's a quote it's a zen proverb it was saying that when you let go of the world you're there or it's like you can let oh man i can't remember it off the top top of my head but it was something about letting go of the world you can just be and be there and like uh there there is no like uh the things that you just talked about too though like no judgment like where you have that self-love and you're able to give that self-love and receive that love. There's no judgment there. It, it ties into the concept of like, when you let the world go, there is no judgment, but there's just love left. You know, it was a very weird, very deep quote, but I posted it on my Facebook. I was just like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this will be a good quote for the day or the hour. I don't know, dude, I just find, find so many different quotes and things that just resonate with me. And I just was like, hmm, this will, do, right? post. this will be a good post. This will be a good post, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, man, like, uh, yeah, that, I think that's the question. Just like, where does the judgment stop? You know, it's like, and you can just have that self love and you can have that love from another person and receive that love at the same time, you know, and then love them in return, you know, that's and, uh, that's definitely what makes a great relationship too, you know, mm. just like loving each other as you are. It's like the ego wants to judge. 
it's not even like your higher self because when you I would say so yeah you observe it ties into the ego mm, you observe yourself right like you're going when I'm at the park I walk past the person and I love them just love them love everything love the trees <laughs> right love, love, <laughs> vibrate in this energy right and it's like you can catch and observe the the observer here you can observe this guy the Kruger if you want to put an entity on it you know because we're all just labels we're all got this ego that's it's, it's all molded into who we are today and when you the ego it's like the ego goes to judge it's like that person um looks homeless or poor that person looks like shit mm. or, you know you start judging you start judging and it's like you can observe that and you're like interesting like what what is this program it's like you're, you're observing the program of this guy that's being hateful and spiteful and it's like how are you how are you going to impact the world coming from a place of like that how are you going mm. to attract wealth when you're coming from a place like that you're blocking the flow of like energy like mm. doesn't it, you're living from a survival instinct if you've gone into chakras and everything like that mm. but um the ego man that's a that's a whole other topic oh yeah no definitely man definitely um so moving forward though, like with uh, visionary men. So once you got, how did you get into your coaching business? How did I get into my coaching? Damn. So that actually basically goes back to when I we were talking about before when mm. we just finished off about the girl. Okay. <laughs> I picked up the journal. Funny right. how it, funny how it wraps back around. All right. Right. Um, it's an energy flow. <laughs> <laughs> You got it, bro. You got it. Let it go and let it flow, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it goes back to, to that journal, um, starting back off with those habits and routines. And I asked myself, how can I make an impact? Mm. Because at the end of the day, you're going to attach yourself to money. You're going to chase money. And I've got money. You know, we, I've, got, I've got accomplishments and, and, you know, receiving money, getting money. I achieved my goal this year of, you know, just being able to work on my terms without, you know, having to go to a job, which mm. I, I'm so grateful for. But then it comes a term point where you're like, okay, is that all you're chasing? Is that all you're chasing? Or are you chasing something else? Um, and that's what I've come to, right? It's like, why do you do what you do? Mm. Because you change lives when you can, you, you, you unlock people's potential. And like, when you can give that to other people, you can, you know, if you're able to unlock somebody else's potential, allow them to live a life on their terms, allow them to discover their passion, their purpose. When you can allow people to see that, just imagine like what it can do for their families. Imagine what it could do for their extended families. And I've been tapping into this vision where there's just people there sitting there thanking me, thanking me because I was able to change their life. Thanking me because I was able to give something to them that nobody else could. I was able to be a symbol of belief to them. Able to be a symbol of belief for them, man. And like that's when I die and pass away, I am a symbol of belief for others. I believe that, I truly believe that. I, I'm a symbol of belief for others. I am able to give that to people mm. because I've been through this. And knowing that you know when i think about that person just sitting there on, on, on the other side of the screen like you know put another person there it's just like yeah. saying thank you kruger you know it was because of you that i was able to believe and even if i can sit down there with one one conversation man mm. with one person and 10 years later you know even if he doesn't invest into me or not mm. if he went away 10 years later and said well it was because of that one conversation with kruger that i was able to believe mm. and that that when I had, when I, when I had that realization, I was like, damn, this is why you do what you do. But to answer your question, it all stemmed from the coaching, right? From personal training mm. and going through that dark period. Okay. And that's what I mean. Like, that's you know, if you're going through a dark period, if anyone's watching or, you know, any, like if you're going through a dark period, I'm sure you can relate, man, is there's so much, like it was a quote again, another quote that just came to mind. I can't think of it, but you know, you look back on all the bad times when you achieve these things and you look back at the struggle and you're like, man, there was just so much learnings and, and, and growth in there. Like when you're winning, it's like, you know, you're not growing as much, you know, but it's, it's, it makes all the, 
the, the losing makes all the winning worth it at the end of the day. You know, we climb this hill just to realize that it's another hill again, you know, and we're, we're forever chasing and, you know, we're, we're always, we're always there. There, there. there is, at the end of the day, when you go think beyond as well as like, there is no path. It's, it's, it's like, there is, there is only the destination. There is no path, you know, we're exactly where we need to be. And it's all been written. I, I, I believe that in some sense, but yeah, yeah, man. Um, it was mainly just, I felt called, man. I felt called to lead. Mm. And I feel like you do too. Mm. Yeah, bro. Awesome, man. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, going through the dark times. Um, one thing I can touch on is that, because <laughs> men go, you know, men grow through, through challenges, right? Um, we take those challenges head on because that's a part of our stigma. No, that's a part of our, it's a part of men's personas is that we have to be challenged to grow potentially. And with any person that is of a growth mindset too, they need to be challenged. Uh, one thing I can tell you about myself personally though, is that I have failed a lot of challenges for myself. Never even got to maybe even accomplishing the feat, you know? And it's unfortunate, but with a lot of my failures that I've had in life, I've learned so much from them, you know, even the heartbreaking ones, even the devastating ones, like, man, I'm leaving this job. You know, I've had this job for two, three years. Like, what am I going to do now? Um, maybe failed friendships, uh, Things like, uh, well, I guess friendships, but, but yeah, you know, like, uh, like I was trying to help somebody at the time and period in my life and they took it the wrong way. They thought, man, I'm tired of this guy trying to save me. And it's like, I was never trying to save you, man, but I was trying to set an example. You know, I wanted you to be better. You know, that's all I wanted. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, friend relationships, like you can only do so much for your friends before they start using you. They start taking advantage of you. They lie to you basically using you, you know, and, uh, he really thought this is a good example. Actually, he really thought that I was like trying to quote unquote, save him. That was not the idea at all. What I got tired of was getting used and abused by him, you know? And so then in that aspect, like, I wouldn't say that it was much of a failure, but it was definitely a relationship that needed to be X'd out, cut out of my life because that wasn't serving me. And at the end of the day, I couldn't uh, successfully serve him because he just wasn't willing to make those changes in his life to be, to be a little bit better, to be, you know, like a good person. And I guess that's a question too, that it comes down to what is a good person, you know? So there's an example there. Um, and that's why it's important to surround yourself with people, good people in your life that support you. They like you for you. You know, mm -hmm. kind of goes back to the relationships between men and women. It's the same thing. And they support your goals and they believe in what you believe in uh, wow. for yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like you know, it goes back to that old saying, like, you're the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with or that you hang around. And it's so true, man. It's so true. And so that's, uh, that was, what, and, you know, I could also, I, I think that this kind of makes, this at least makes sense to me what I'm about to say, but like, that's kind of where I failed with my friendships is that I wasn't surrounding myself with people that were helping me that, that didn't, um, that didn't have that, uh, at, they didn't have that aspiration to support me as a person, you know, mm -hmm. instead they just wanted to use me and abuse me. Uh, we could just use the, use it, use that as an example. Um, you know, some other things I guess is, there's some failures that I could think of in my life. Like, I mean, we could talk about women, but like, you know, I realized that the one thing that I didn't do right was that I wasn't acting like a man in the relation, in the relationship. I was, I was being somebody else, you know? And I thought that that was what was attractive to women, but until you can really figure out what is attractive to women. And at the end of the day, they're attracted to a masculine man. You know, 
they will never teach you how to be a man. You really have to figure that out for yourself or you have to learn that from your father. And I can, I can relate to you on the father figure aspect because where I failed in my relationships, it was, it stemmed from me not having a father figure in my life. And that's so crucial for men in their lives today that they need that father figure in their life. Because sometimes they can, they can have such a fucked up life to where their dad is not there at all or is a piece of shit, you know, and abuses them. And so then they get this negative connotation of what a masculine man is or what a father is. So they could actually have a mentor of sorts come alongside them that sees what they're going through and that they're struggling in life and they could take on that father figure position too. Aside from if they have a good father figure in their life, so this is the other aspect, they will embrace that masculinity and they'll embrace those challenges that life throws at them because they had that good father figure in a sense. And it all starts at home. Uh, love starts at home, you know, kind of coming full circle again, you know, that energy. Um, and uh, that, uh, that was one part where I, where I had also failed in my life. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, as, as far as being a leader goes, um, I definitely have the potential, I feel like. And I'm kind of trying to set that example with my content, you know, and just who I can talk to. I've talked to a lot of young guys, such as yourself, some, some guys that are younger than you even, and a few of them that are actually almost my age. And uh, I get to see where they're coming from in their aspects of life, and then they ask, they kind of pop the question to me like, so what did you do? I mean, you're, you're like three decades old, man. So like, what did you do in your life? And I'm like, well, I can tell you what not to do, but <laughs> that's where I learned, you know? Um, and so I think what, um, what I could say in an aspect, how I failed a lot in life is that it might set me up to over overcome those same challenges that maybe come back into my life until I, overcome them and I uh, achieve success through those challenges. I, I, you know, like I complete the mission, you could say, or um, I learn enough from my failures that when I see this similar challenge, I'll be like, okay, remember how this happened five years ago? This is how you're going to solve that problem now. Because leaders are uh, problem solvers. They, they fix they fix things and they can lead their communities. They can lead their people. They can lead their relationships. Any great king, you know, any great king uh, knows how to take care of his people, but he has to always be thinking of what is going to be good for the people, you know, and leading by example is the biggest thing. You know, I think any good, I learned this a while ago, if I can touch on this point, uh, any good leader, we could even say this, any good manager is willing to do the work of their employees, setting the example, right? So maybe we could use an example of like a supervisor that uh, is overseeing his people and making sure that they're doing their job. But if they're not leading by example and helping out their employees and doing the, their work that they need to be doing, say if they're down people, they're not going to, they're not going to see you know, that support that they need from their leader, that they need from their supervisor. So any good supervisor is willing to do the work that is, uh, any good supervisor who is willing to do the work of their employees, you know, that's setting the example. And so I guess for a king, a king has to live a lifestyle to where the people can look up to that king and they can see that, huh, he's not getting drunk off the wine. He's not being selfish with throwing a bunch of fancy parties. He's actually helping out the village right now. You know, um, he's, he's stopping a war from breaking out. So he's taking care of these things. Uh, you know, any good king, I think, thinks of the people first. You know, I kind of digressed a little bit there, but I, I wanted to make a point with uh, kind of the work environment because uh, if you have a bad supervisor, your employees just aren't going to be doing as good of a job and they'll try to get away with more than what they do, 
but any good supervisor who is willing to do the work of their employees, like for example, like I, like I just mentioned earlier, if any team of workers is down a person or something like that, and they need the help, that supervisor, a good supervisor, will go to that team and be like, hey guys, where can I help you? What can I do for you? I'm here to work. I got a lot on my plate back at my desk, but I'm here to help you guys right now because we need to fix this problem. We have a job that we need to get done. And then whatever, even if it's an hour, if it's the whole day, he's helping them out. She's helping them out, whoever it is. And then they can go back to their desk and take care of what needs to be done for, for the day. You know, it all, it all, I'm being a little bit vague on the example, but, or the scenario, but you know, that, uh, that example, I think, kind of rings true. And I think that kind of goes into the king archetype. You know, what can the king do for his kingdom? How can they provide value? Not just by setting an example, but thinking of the people. And I think setting the good example of what a leader will do, uh, he'll be thinking of the people first in that aspect. You know, a sober king rules with a mighty hand in, in that kind of sense. So leadership, mm -hmm. man. <laughs> wow wow man hmm. it's a lot that is a lot <laughs> i may have digressed a little bit <laughs> yeah you you're you're hitting the nails on the head though man you're hitting the nails on the head because we're talking about failures before hmm. Hmm. we're talking about failures before and you're talking about the failures with your friends um, being in those places where people weren't lifting you up. Hmm. And it's interesting, right? Because so many guys are going back to that switch again. It's like, sure. Go back to it. They, they you will have friends in that certain place before the switch. Like, you know, there's like post switch and pre switch. It's like, there's the partying friends. You're still hanging around there. And they're not necessarily lifting you up. They're not necessarily, they may be supportive of what you're doing. They may not actually like what you do. Maybe maybe talking shit behind your back. Yeah. We all that know they happen. just Yeah. We all know <laughs> they're just biggest fans anyway. But um, you know, when you go when you when you go do this lifestyle, it's like you got to get around people, man. You got to get around people because I know for a cold hard fact I would not be on the trajectory of thinking that I'm on right now. Mm. I would not have been able to go through all the times of being broke, sleeping in my car. I never had the mindset that I had to be around the people that truly, truly were able to lift me up and give me this sort of level of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was in my car, man, you know, I, I was, I came down to Auckland, which is about two hours from where I, where I was originally staying. Okay. And, um, this was a while ago now, but I drove down here and had zero, I had zero, had nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I came to the place where I drove down in my car because I know I needed to take a risk. Mm. I know I needed to take a risk because I was too comfortable. And ever since that I've come down here, I've just, things have just moved. My finances have just moved. They're in a better place now. But nice, man. the amount of times that I cried in my car, you know, all of that stuff that I went through and all of that stuff that I did go through, you know, there were times where I was so happy. And I, I would say to myself, how the fuck, excuse the French again, but how, how, the, <laughs> how, the, how, the heck, how the heck did I like have this, such a positive mind frame in a situation like this? How, how did I do that? I, I was saying that to myself. I was like, damn, like, you know, if you can keep a positive mind frame in this, obviously I had the hard times. I welcomed them, you know, the crying, the banging of the steering wheel, mm. um, only having buns and chicken. Uh, to eat. Oh, buns and chicken? Is yeah, that like, an, is that like a delicacy? Oh, nah, oh, like a bun, bun and a chicken and a, patty? Chicken, you got it. You got it. Okay, gotcha. You guys got that down in New Zealand, right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. so, so we had, I had that. That's all I had in my car. And, you know, if I never had people, and I remember one guy called me up one day and I was just crying because. I don't know, you know, you get into failures, you think the ego is in real, in a heavy place and it's taking place and you, you wonder if this is even going to work. Mm -hmm. You wonder if what you're doing is going to work. And this is why I got the fucking tattoo, man, you know, like. Oh, is that what that means? It's all in. It's all fucking in. You know, it was yeah. my dream. 
to to have a business where I didn't have to show off for anyone else. Uh, it's including a gym. That's including you know another place. Not to say that working is bad. It was just my personal dream to to achieve money where I don't have to. I can be anywhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, I totally but that. Going through all of the <laughs> the, the those challenges, man. It's just like I look back at that and I'm like, damn. Imagine what you can do for other people now. You know, you've gone through that. Mm. Imagine what you can give to others now because of what you've gone through. Mm-hmm. And being in this whole this whole state of of mindset, if I was around uh, negative people, that would tell me, hey, look, that their business idea isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they would tell me to go back to a job. And you know. I said, fuck that shit, man. Fuck that shit. Mm. I'm out here to, to keep going no matter what. Right. I'm here to live life on my terms. And like I said, like you said too, if you're going to surround yourself with the positive people, um, there is no failures, man. There's only lessons. I look back right. to that. Yeah, it was just a big lesson, man. Like it led me to where I am today. And now I'm going to be able to have fucking so much more impact so much more impact so much so much more be able to impact and serve to other people at such such high levels you know um i really want to leave a legacy behind and it's already left behind you know but because the story's already written but you know again you know if you don't have the people around there then you're going to fall back into old luke or you're going to fall back into old kruger Mm. so you've got to have the powerful friendships there eh? i definitely definitely um, would not be where I am today without that. Like wholeheartedly know that with confidence. Yeah. No, for sure, man. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. So real quick, your, your tattoo on your neck. What, what, what does that mean? Cause I, I heard you say it, but I, I, I missed it. Like what, what did you say that that means? All in. All in. So that's what that symbol means. Or is it spelled out? Uh, like this is like Maori, so right? It's like a tribal. Uh, it's a. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks tribal. It's a tamoko, right? So that's what they call it. Um, it goes all the way down here as well. You've probably seen it on my Instagram, but I've seen it on your channel, yeah, on your IG. Yeah. It's um, it's all in, bro. You know, like, because I said to myself, okay, I don't want to go back to a job. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Well, I'll just get a tattoo on my fucking neck then. Like, oh, man. Like, hey, cool. I'm not going to go back to jobs. So I'm going to get a tattoo on my neck. Oh, right. Because it's revealed. Okay. Reveal. Like, it's like I'm um, a turtleneck at work every day. I got you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, it, people, people don't really accept it. You know, jobs, retail, things like that. You know, it's just not as accepted. I'm not saying yeah. I couldn't get a job. It just decreases the chances of me getting a job. Mm. I said to myself, okay, cool. This is just going to symbolize that. This is a burning of the boats. So this mm. symbolizes me leaving an old Kruger behind. That symbolizes me leaving an old me behind. It's like a, I'm locking the door and throwing the fucking key away. It's like, you're never going back there. So it's like, some people need to put themselves in those situations. I don't feel like people don't put themselves in those fucking situations. They, they still hold on to the old self. They still hold on pre-switch to the partying, the drinking, the, the clubbing. I don't want to, I don't want to stop chasing females. Or I don't, I don't want to, they, they don't give that lifestyle up, which is why, um, it's going to be tough for you to be able to live a life you desire. Mm. I can give that to people. You know, I give, I truly can give that to people. I can truly help people do, do what it is that they want to do. You can't save everyone. Like you, like you like you're doing before. Mm-hmm. You can't save everyone like your friend, you know, you can't. Exactly. exactly. It's one of the biggest lessons I learned, man. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Unless if you're unwilling to change your lifestyle, like you just, you won't achieve what you really want in life, you know? You got to make that sacrifice. That's what it comes down to. I've talked about this on my channel too, making the proper sacrifices. Uh, you have to make those proper sacrifices to achieve what you're really going for, you know? And uh, if you're not all in, this will be, this will be my, <laughs> this will be my uh, sign language for you. If you're not all in, Kruger Burton, <laughs> you won't get there. Simple as that. You're right, though. That's cool, man. That, yeah, that's, man. That, that, that's, a, that's a great reminder. That's great. That's beautiful. Is, but um, like I said, people have people got stigmas around tattoos these days. But um, they do. If yeah. I ask the, the question to me, and I'm just like, oh, it's just fucking all in. Like, um, it's not. It's not for looks. I don't get my tattoos for looks at all. Mm. 
any of that aesthetic, they look cool, they do, but yeah. get it because I had to decide, you know, are you going to make this fucking work for yourself? Is this your only option? This is what you want to do? Is this what you want to do? Is this, is this, this coaching, this serving people? I don't even like the word coach because I don't have a fucking tag around my neck. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm serving people at the highest level. Is this, is this the route you're going to go down? Is this what you want to do? This is your second attempt. You gave up the fucking first time. Mm. Is this it? Is this, is, this, is this what you want to do? Okay, then. Cool. I decided. Man, I got a tattoo on my fucking neck. And then, cool. You're leaving that old guy behind. You're leaving that fucking old guy behind. Yeah, you can go on and have fun. You can go out and um, sleep with the females and, and do all that stuff. But it's all for fun. That's it. You know, when you truly want to focus on your purpose, right. put all your effort into that and, and every all your bits of energy into that because this is what you want to pursue this is what you want to achieve this is what you want to be able to give back and, and serve the world and leave behind a legacy and damn bro like you gotta leave the old south behind and that was just me um i like the, i like the term burning the boats burning the boats now when you burn the boats you gotta fucking swim you gotta fucking make it work oh man yeah. so that's what you meant by burning the boats okay yeah. yeah i was about to ask you about that but you answered my question <laughs> awesome man no that's a good it's a good tattoo, man. No, like yeah, it. You. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, man, interesting. I like the symbolism. Thank you, bro. Yeah, dude, that's a good meaning. Well, let's see here, dude. What is your routine like? I gotta hear Kruger Burton's routine. My routine. Between uh, meditation, exercise, maybe you could dive into a little bit about your diet, what you eat in the mornings or what you eat in the evenings. Yeah, sure. You know. Sure, man. Um, Cause I definitely have morning and evening routines and I've done videos on that. You know, yeah. I'm I'm evening routine. I just journal at the end of the night. Yeah. Uh, something that I have been quite slack on. I'm not going to lie. I'm not oh. going to lie. It's all right. Evening routine I've gone slack on. Um, oh, should we just, should we just cut that out and talk about the highlight reel? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, nah. Um, yeah. People, you know, we, we have places we need to work on, but um, my morning routine, right now i've set a new goal to to be waking up early man i've been shocking with my wake-up times um i want to be waking up at 7 a.m and eventually 5 30. Mm. um and the reason for that i'll i'll uh, say in a second but when i wake up the first thing i do is i have a cold shower um, okay just flat out right off the bat you just go right into the bathroom or into that shower stall and you just yeah just go down in the shower on pop in there Nice. Uh, that, I go down, just down over here, just down over here and sit down outside. And I do this breathing technique, right? Um, it's really good for having, you know, transendian experiences, right? Um, it's good. Oh, shit. I need to get into the melatonin, which is getting up early because melatonin is at its peak. Mm. And, you know, I'm getting up too late to, to have that melatonin response through the pineal gland. But okay. what I do is I, I get all the blocked energy out of my chakras. So the bottom chakra is the root chakra. So right. when you squeeze your, like, you know, how you do Kegel workouts and you know, we like squeeze. Yes. You might have had it with ED. Um, Cause yep. I know I had, you know, the Kegels and it actually did help a little bit, but oh, you're squeezing your pretty much we'll your penis. That later. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much squeezing your penis in, just tensing the bottom of your abs. Okay. Sucking in, squeezing. And then you're squeezing at the top here, the top, top part of your abs. Huh. And then you're like, pretty much just like sucking all the, oh, breathing in all the way up and you scratch your head at the top because where your attention goes, your energy flows. So like when I go to do that, I breathe, the energy goes there, I hold, hold my breath and then I squeeze, and I squeeze. Mm. And when you put your attention there, it feels like almost like a mind orgasm. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. And when you do that a multiple amount of times, it's like a rowing machine. It's like you're like pumping this sort of, I can't remember what the, the um, the, the thing that it pumps out when you do that, but it's, it's blocking, it's from the blocked energy in your root chakra and the, the three bottom chakras, your survival chakras. So when you, okay. when you push it up all the way through to the top of your head, um, somehow it was said it in Joe Dispenza's book that this is pretty crazy, but um, you gotta be really open-minded minded to understand this is when you do that and you have these transendial experiences, you're actually receiving information into the pineal gland faster than the speed of light which is insane. Yeah. So it's, it's like, um, Dr. Uh, 
Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. So I highly recommend that book too, man. But okay. um, that's something that I've really started to dive into. So I've been diving for an, about an hour a day. So my, my morning routine's heavily around meditation at the moment. Um, being able to really just dive in and lift my energy for the day, to vibrate in love, to vibrate in gratitude, to vibrate in a place where my future already exists because it already does, you know? Um, no, those are good intentions, especially when you're meditating. Yeah. You can set sit, visualization. Yeah, setting the intention for the day because when you can get into an elevated state of emotions rather than just visualizing, you're having mm -hmm. an experience. Yeah, you have right. an experience, bro. You know, you're not having a, I'm seeing pictures when you can truly vibrate in a state of gratitude and love, then that your internal and shut down the beta frequencies because you go into the alpha frequencies. Mm. And then that's where your internal reality, you overcome the analytical mind. And when you tap into overcome the analytical mind and tap into the state of alpha, you're able to get into this place where the internal world becomes the pretty much the external world. It becomes your world in a sense. And when you can get into this place, you're like almost planting seeds in your subconscious mind to, I'm confident, I'm great, I'm super attractive to women, um, money flows to me freely. And you tell yourself these things because, you know, when you have all these uh, big investments that you that people are going to make into you, you've got to really be worthy enough to receive these sorts of things. Mm. So um, that's where my meditation, I put, put most of my eggs in basket into that to really just create this me, create who I want to be, because you're either defined by the past or you're either defined by a vision of the future. So I turn into that vision every single day. I turn into that legacy. And I even created a bloody mind movie on my phone, like of all the things that oh, shit. Um, <laughs> where my future already exists. You know, I dived right into it where I'm just like, I'm truly just operate, <coughs> excuse me, but operating in the frequency to, as if my future already exists and moving as that guy. Because at the end of the day, I love this quote is I am already everything that I seek to create. Mm. And you are. Because when you receive an external amount of money or you receive an external object, it's like, I still feel the same. You know, you see this amount of money added to your income, you get a big payment come through, you still feel the same. Yeah. You know? It's just like, you're already everything you seek to create. Stop searching for the answer. Stop yeah. searching for the answer to have, the, yeah, the answer is no answer. That's, that's what I've been coming to a bit of a paradox there, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that's where I put all my focus in. And then after that, it's, um, I go off to train and then, yeah. You go off to train. Okay. What, uh, what's your training regimen? Are you doing just calisthenics? Are you weight lifting or are you doing like hip Power workouts? Powerlifting. Powerlifting. Power nice. But I'm powerlifting right now. So my strength isn't going up. Okay. Well, yeah, pescatarian. So I do powerlifting, strength, strength training, five by five at the moment, eight by four actually now. Um, oh, nice. Just to maintain the muscle while I'm on a cut. But yeah, I recently went pescatarian, man. Um, hmm. Yeah, please tell us about that. Yeah, it's um, interesting because that's been a big shift inside of my life because everything that I've gone through has just allowed me to tap into the state of, man, you go back to the old food, shit food, it's like you don't actually notice how much yeah. energy, like, the way you eat, because I've been eating so clean, bro. Like, that's insane. Like, I just, I've never ate this clean before. And it's like, holy shit. Mm. I feel like I'm having an orgasm like 24 seven or something. Like, <laughs> it's like, wow. You must be getting that from the powerlifting. You, you have to, because when you kick up those, um, those, those good hormones kick up with your lifting sessions. I mean, Arnold talked about it highly with bodybuilding. He felt like he was coming all the time when, he, when everyone had trained. I mean, yeah, I half yeah. of it could have been the steroids, half of it could have been the training. I don't know. But he had a point there because I felt that way when I was training consistently, very consistently in my bodybuilding days. So, no, but but yeah, please go ahead. No, uh, pescatarian, you feel like you're having an orgasm because of how clean you're eating all the time. Just, yeah, bro. Like, just, um, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but like, I'm feeling fucking good. Like, you know, feeling really good, really, really good. Um. And so what does, uh, what does pescatarian kind of tie into? Cause I don't know it too well, actually. And I'm huge on trying out different diets as you've seen in my content, but yeah. 100%, yeah. So like between, is it animal proteins that you eat whole, whole green foods? Like, uh, what is it exactly? So all it is, man, is you're vegetarian, but you eat fish. That's, that's all it is. That's oh, really? 
oh wow trend of fish so i've cut out meat but um ever since that i cut out meat i was like okay cool i'm gonna eat healthier anyway so it was like the decision of pescatarian putting like a diet around what i do allowed me to eat cleaner mm -hmm. calorie counting as well but hey man it's it's um you eat good you feel good yeah so, Many people no, just do. so blind to their diet. It's just the most basic thing. But eat clean. It'll mm -hmm. change your life. One thing that I've yet to try is fasting, man, but mm. um, I'm definitely going to try that very soon. Uh, I recommend it, actually. Um, the best way I was able to fast was doing keto. And, uh, dude, that was a mind shift in and of itself. I had to get fat adapted first, but... Um, it allows you to do intermittent fasting very easily. Uh, 16 and eight was what my regular regimen was. I never tried to push it any further than that just because of my lifestyle and with work. And then um, I tried to tie in my training method with, within that too, as well as doing and establishing my routines. I've changed them up over the years, but now I've really kind of dialed in what works for me. But you know, sometimes man, you gotta change a few things around too, just to kind of keep your body guessing, you know? You know what I mean? But 16 and eight, if you do start out with intermittent fasting or fasting, um, I would go with intermittent fasting and try out 16 and eight. It works really well with keto because when your body gets into ketosis, your body's not taking in any calories and with the kind of animal fat that you're ingesting, making these, I call them keto coffee bombs. And I would do a huge combination of MCT oil or coconut oil or both full fat, grass fed butter, full, um, full on whole ghee butter, black coffee, hot brewed, um, and heavy cream. I forgot to mention that heavy cream. So either between raw butter or ghee depends on what you can buy, what's in your budget, whatever, or if you can get them all, get them all experiment with it. That satiated me so much versus just eating one meal at breakfast that I was able to carry that into my 16 hour fasting window and then eat in a caloric surplus in two meals at the end of the day before I would go to sleep. Uh, and the trick with that, cause you can't screw up intermittent fasting very easily. This, I'm just generalizing it, but you want to make sure that you're getting at least if you're eating 2000 to 3000 calories, you want to make sure you get that in your two meals for the day because, uh, if you don't do that right, you won't get those intermittent fasting results that you're trying to do, um, especially um, especially if you're on a cut, for example. Uh, if you're eating in a caloric deficit, you'd obviously eat less with those two um, eating windows that you'll have for those big meals for, the, for that day. So you'll eat in a caloric deficit for those two meals. But um, to get the caloric surplus, you have to eat enough in those two meals when you're doing um, a keto diet. And keeping yourself in ketosis. Uh, the whole goal with ketosis, though, uh, you basically cut out sugar. If you do eat carbs, it's below 35 to uh, around 50 for men. Women, Basically, it's, big is that. women it's, it's typically like 30 to 35 grams of carbs, but for men, you need a, typically a little bit more. And you can get a lot of those in mixed greens, your complex carbs. Obviously, you want to eat oatmeal or rice because they're too starchy. But lots of greens, lots of greens. And then you can have certain berries in, in, um, on the keto diet. It's because of the antioxidant content and it's the, uh, between the fruit, uh, the fruit cro well, fructose, <laughs> the fructose and the, uh, glucose response between those, uh, certain fruits, but you can't eat all fruits because uh, some of them will spike up your insulin so high that it'll throw you out of ketosis. Gotcha. Um, and I did that for like solid two years. I even did that around my competition time. I was doing ketosis. The only time that I ate tons of carbs and I actually had sugar. So advanced carbs, I want to say like, we could even say saturated, I'll call them saturated carbs. And sugar was uh, on my competition day because I needed to pump up my body, the muscles for glycogen because I was on a, a cut for 16 weeks and then I was on a water cut for a week. And then I, yeah, the last day I had to put down two gallons of water with one pickle to get the sodium content in there. So that way to pee out all my minerals. The next day, dry as a bone. And I was pissing like crazy. Then I sat down for breakfast and I ate, I ordered bacon, eggs, and waffles. 
like a uh, three stack, four stack waffle with tons of syrup and butter. And I smashed those pancakes or waffles down. I ate a little bit of the protein. I didn't eat the entire meal because otherwise I was going to get bloated on stage. Went out there and I did my thing. But I had to pump up my glycogen store, uh, glycogen sources there. Um, but that also prepared me for the carnivore diet. So then I jumped right into it and I had to get back into ketosis again. Did the carnivore diet for five weeks. And uh, I also found out if you're doing a cut, you can actually go the other way and do like, it's basically advanced keto, but if you do the carnivore diet and eat nothing but meat, cut out sugar and plants and fruit all together, you lose a ton of weight, dude. I lost so much weight when I did that for five weeks. It was insane. It was a huge paradigm shift for me. Um, Cause I also have a history of veganism as well. So I don't even want to call it veganism. I went vegan for a period of eight months straight and I tried to go raw. So you have the, you'll have all the people come in here with the, um, <laughs> the <protesters. laughs> what, what was that? I'll have all the people come in with what? All the protesters with the vegans. Oh man. Yeah, I know this is going to get flagged for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, definitely got to break out of those dogmas though. Um, I need to do a video on that because, uh, um, the way I see it, like with diet and, and dogmas, like, the reason why I ate vegan was specifically for health purposes, for nutrition, vitamin and mineral content. Um, it was not to state or stand for saving the animals. Okay, I believe that man is ruler over all those animals, but I don't believe that we should abuse them. You know, I don't believe that we should kill them in a misa uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We shouldn't kill them in a horrible way, horrific way, in an abusing way, you know. You know, people do that, but uh, at the same time, like we're, we're a species that's above them. We're the rulers over them. So we're in charge of them. We're supposed to be caretakers of them, but we also have the option to use them as food. You know, um, the late great Dr. Christopher once said to that, um, you can't put your hand to the square and say that you'll never touch me because in times of, I believe he said famine and I think it was just mainly famine. Like when you're out of your vegetarian food, when you're out of your produce, you have no fresh greens around, what else are you gonna eat? Well, what's been sitting in the freezer for the, like, the last two years? Your meat. Only in cases of emergency where you have a, okay, so it was food, sh well, yeah, it's just famine. I think his other concept was because where he lectured around huge snowstorms, people would get snowed in, they couldn't get out of the house. So they eat all their fresh stuff, right? They eat all their foods but then they got nothing left except for the freeze, uh, the free, the meat in the freezer that they forgot about about two years ago, red meat. Oh no. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to eat it to survive because it's going to be another week before the snow melts or before you can get dug out. So that's just an example, but, um, you eat it in times of emergency or, fa or famine, we could say, you know, um, and that, and what I mean by famine is like, you got nothing, your garden did horrible. Uh, there's been a serious drought. You can't grow, an herb or a tomato plant to save your life. <laughs> all you got is that fish, you know, all you got is that uh, steak in your, in your freezer. So what are you going to do? Well, survivalist instincts will kick in like from our ancestors of old hunter gatherer scenario. And you're going to eat that meat enough said, you know, and then when that time or season is over, you can go back to growing your garden, to eating your fresh produce, things like that. So, done a lot of experimentation with diets. I need to talk a little bit about it more in the future, but you know, so it's done a little dark, man. <laughs> I've lived a lot of life, man. I got 30 years. So, <laughs> um, awesome, man. No, your routine sounds great. Um, I definitely want to get on that level of meditation, man. Cause I was wondering what you did for the meditation for the hour. I didn't know that you actually went through your root chakras and you're hitting that pineal gland opening up the third eye. That's what you're hitting into, man. That's amazing, man. Mm. It's one of my goals. That's, um, having a trans and trans into your experience, a mystical experience. Um, yeah. I need to get up earlier in order to make that happen. Oh, you, you know, do. When I have these things, it's, you know, people say, go take acid or go take DMT. It's like, I was like, going to ask if you acid. did try any psychedelics in the past. Acid, but okay. I didn't have anything crazy happen to me. 
you know, and I, to be honest, at the end of the day, if it happens physically, or like, oh, sorry, if it happens sober, without um, substances, I believe that it's more of a reason for it to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you're more ready for it to happen. If you were to take DMT, what if you're not ready for that? What if you're, what if you're ready? What oh, if you were yeah. not ready for what to see, what you're about to see? Yeah. You know, I believe when you have, ha, ha, when it happens naturally, you're in a way you're, you're more ready for it. Because I know, um, what's his name? The guy that did DMT, the fighter, uh, what's his name? Joe he, Rogan? No, no, no. He was on Joe Rogan. Oh, he was. Okay. He's a fighter though. And he did Fight DMT. The guy's ears. What's his name? Guys with his ears. No, he bit, bit some guy's ear off or something. Oh, Mike Tyson? <laughs> I think it's Mike Tyson. The, I think it is. So the boxer. I think it is. Black, yeah, I think it's, black guy? Okay. Yeah, I think it's him. Hardest yeah. hitting boxer, professional boxer in, in the boxing world. I, I want to say that it was in the world, but yeah, no, he bit some guy's ear off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, then it was him, it was him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he, he did DMT a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said um, he just didn't want to come back. Mm. Yeah. He said that he didn't want to come back. That's yeah, why he did DMT. Well, yeah, he did it, but then he didn't want to come back because, like, he's seen something that was just. Man, you have these experiences, and you hear about these experiences, and you're like, people are seeing colors that they've never seen before. Oh right, right. Dude, that. Okay, are... so he saw something on his trip, and he didn't want to go back to that. So that's why he quit doing DMT. No, 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 no. no. He, he wanted to stay there. He wanted to stay there because it was. He would have felt like this oh. whole spiritual, like, enlightenment, uh, wholeness. It would have just felt like, you know, just full of ecstasy and love, bro, and just peace and unity, everything just connected. Mm. He would have had something very, very spiritual experience. I'm not too sure, but I'm just speaking like, you know, to have a spiritual experience like that, to have those transcendental experiences like that, they change your life, they shift your life, they shift your perspective, your paradigm. Yeah. And when you can achieve that naturally, um, you'll never see life the same. You have an experience like that, like what the hell, how do you explain that? You got people out there that are like seeing colors they've never seen before in their life mm-hmm. yeah you know you, you can't it's just like what the fuck like this 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 universe is too complex for us to, to understand oh definitely no definitely and you know with that you kind of mentioned this about ego death a little bit ago i think that really plays a role in having those transcendental uh, experiences 100 percent. you gotta let go you have to yeah. let go it's the same thing with if you're tripping on psychedelics, like you will get humbled. If, if you're not humbled when you have that experience and when you're about to get into that trip, you will get humbled in a very negative way. You know, if you're not ready to submit yourself to that and just let it flow. Mm. But I agree with you on the fact that it's better if it happens more naturally, because when you're, we can even tie that back into the diet. And again, like what we just talked about, you're on a higher fr- vibration to a degree to where like you're feeling good and you're healthy and you're able to shift your mind into that more fluidly, you know, versus getting high, I think. And um, I've had some of those similar experiences before, more like I became very, very self-aware when I started eating better, when I, when I got out of that bad lifestyle of eating fast food and and junk food and stuff. And I, I wasn't raised on the best food in the past until I started bodybuilding. Then I really got into good, clean eating. You know, um, even having experiences with the, the vegan diet. And I realized that, like, I got to a point to where my body was acting on such a high vibration that I could figure out and actually feel the fatigue and the depression and the anxiety that I was experiencing from the bad food that I was eating. And then it was just like night and day. Every time I went back to that bad food, I had those bad repercussions. But then when I got back onto the good food, when I was eating clean and exercising, I was like, man, I feel great, you know? And I'm just like thinking, what is that? And then people well, mentioned, oh, orgasm. people were like mentioning, oh, dude, you're on that higher vibration. That's why. I'm like, oh, okay. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, one of my friends, uh, he gained 150 pounds vegetarian and he's a CrossFit coach. I'm like, Holy. you gained, you got up to 150 on a vegetarian diet. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, what do you eat for protein? Well, just eggs and milk. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> That's where he was getting most of his protein, you know, but yeah. everything else plants for days, fruits and vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, man. Pounds, please. 
So would you also say, how about we dive into the next topic? Would you also sure. say that getting onto that transcendental mental state, no fact lifestyle, do you think that that kind of helped you get into that spiritual sense? Do you think that helped you out with your spiritual life? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you got into no fab. Mm. Mm, definitely, definitely, man. Um, well, jeez, that one's really all started, man. Um, going back to that journal thing again, you know, it's um, it all started when um, I was like, okay, I need to improve my life. And I got into NoFit, but then I heard of this other one called semen retention. Mm, semen and it's retention. not quite like NoFit. It's more of a spiritual practice. But oh. then I've also been diving into Brahmichara, if I pronounce it correctly. Brahmichara. Being a yogi, but it's your sexual transmutation. You know, you're, you're withstanding oh. from speaking. You're withstanding from your, your sexual energy. You're breaking free from lust. Mm-hmm. You're conserving yourself so you can be at flow. It's like a very different practice, again, beyond semen retention. It's like no fat, semen retention, primary child. But I've been practicing retention, but um, I haven't been on any mad streaks lately. Um, you know, and I, I, I've already been on one mad streak. But um, one thing that really got me into it was I came to a place, man, where, you know, I was, I was addicted. You know, I was truly, truthfully addicted to it, man. Like I could yeah. say that I've been a lot of guys that can't even admit that. I was there. I think, oh, it's not a problem. Not a problem. Everyone does it. Oh, the prostate cancer. I've heard that one a million times. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just, I come to the point where I was like, okay, cool. So I'll give this a try. Um, there's all these weird benefits, like woman attraction. I was like, what the hell? Okay. Yeah. And then I felt like that was almost placebo for me personally. I thought it was like, okay, cool. Yeah, they do. But I'll tell you my experience on that actually, yeah. because when woman attraction, you know, you haven't nutted in 10 days, right? You're going to be yeah. in the state where you're going to, you're, 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 you're from a survival standpoint, you're just going to be like, okay, cool. I haven't, I haven't procreated anything. I'm not spreading my genes. Mm-hmm. You're going to be way more riskier in approaching woman. You're going to be way more riskier and just, wanting to go out and meet new girls and, and, and really push it forward to, to go fucking bust them nuts. Cause you just want to get out there and procreate, you know, like, yeah. when you, I mean, it's like, I experienced it last weekend, man, you know, cause I hadn't done it in like 12 days and um, I ended up sipping with this girl and you know, it just, it was like this, it was funny to observe myself. I had a bit to drink, but I was observing <laughs> myself and it was like, it's not even me at this point. It felt, it felt like something was like almost pulling me to, to go and like talk to girls. Like, cause you know, when you talk to girls and stuff like that, there's always that level of nerves. You gotta do like, you gotta have balls to go up and approach. Every but single time, man. Every it, single time. It gets, it only gets easier as you get better at approaching. But it's so, always there. Yeah, it's, but always, it's there. always there. And it can be yeah. either really high or really low. Yeah. So it's always there though, man. But it was like the level of like, uh, it wasn't even me pushing myself. It was like, I was being pulled to make those. It was like, you got to procreate, you know, it was an interesting place. Um, and then I took this girl back, um, did my thing, see you later. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was, it's, it was been an interesting ride retention because it's allowed me to tap into my spiritual. It's allowed me to mm. tap into a higher frequency, like you were speaking about before, with like the foods you eat and all that yeah. stuff. But yeah, I've learned a lot from it. Um, especially the one thing that I really do, what I'm, what I'm, want to achieve, and what I'm on the path to is being able to come from a place of mastering lust, mm. not letting it have it over you, mm. because it's just so many guys are controlled by lust. So many guys are controlled by lust that they they, yep. they let it they are. stuff them over in relationships with women. It doesn't let them have the masculine power. Mm-hmm. doesn't let them have the... Man, I'm telling you, man, like you were speaking before, you've read the way, the book of the... Uh, what was it called? The Book of the Way by Dave, David Dieter, right? Uh, the Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that book right there has got some gold in it because from what you said, it's like <sighs> relationships don't work when the feminine is masculine. You know, and mm-hmm. the man is submissive. Mm-hmm. You're submissive because she's got something between her legs that you desire all the time. Right. It's not going to work, man. It's just, how long is that going to last? 
-hmm. she's either going to stay with you because she's she's insecure in herself she mm -hmm. believes that she can't be loved by anyone else mm -hmm. or she's just going to leave you and what they call monkey branching she'll just go off and see another guy you know it's, it's just um, i feel like guys should get in control That's of love response yeah yeah and just learn to get in control of it learn to value your sexual energy because when you do that is this lady or is this female is she is she worth my energy and it just puts you in a place of you know masculine frame and that's the way it should be absolutely you know might have some crazy feminists that they come and say oh you know men are superior like <laughs> but that's just the way it is it's how it works it's just the masculine frame leads the feminine right but it all it all complements at the end of the day it but does. yeah man yeah no it totally does yeah no and uh it just won't work especially i don't care what the feminists say <laughs> it just won't work <laughs> you know uh yeah so i mean like i think that played a part for me too in my energy levels as well uh really trying to uh manifest that that uh that sexual energy and master it um it is it is possible, especially when you were talking about that one term, the yogis do practice that a lot. Uh, the gurus, they got it dialed in, man. They're able to control that stuff and move that up through their chakras, you know? And I don't know too, I don't know too well about the chakras. Um, yeah. even though I do meditate, my meditation is um, a lot different than yours. Um, I can't go for a solid hour like you do with the breath work, but my breath work that I do is similar to the Wim Hof method, which I've been practicing for, um, it was on and off the last two years, but I did it for a solid six months, almost an, an entire year before I went and did a workshop. And then I really got, um, an experience of a lifetime to where I could learn different techniques with the breath work and a push-up exercise and a meditation exercise to use it to my advantage. And where I, where it wasn't going to take 30 to 40 minutes for me to just do three rounds a day where I could just do one round once a day and uh, learn the DMT push uh, with a certain kind of breath work. So, and I, I mean, I made a video on that as well. I'm glad I did. That one, that one's finally been doing well after three years. So <laughs> <laughs> the views just climbed on it, man. Um, it's, a good, it, it, it's a good, it's a good 10 minute tutorial, but it took a while for it to get some traction, mainly because of the thumbnail, but you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and dude, that Wim Hof guy, he's on a whole nother level whole nother level but he definitely would be able to identify with what you've talked about with that sexual transmutation and the kind of breath work that you do because he's literally like a walking encyclopedia for every yoga move out there you name a move he can do it <laughs> and that's how he developed his method was he studied under the gurus and the yogis various parts of the world traveled the world man, to create this and, and create this amazing breath work and it's also not just um, a spiritual exercise, but it's also a healing and healthy exercise. The instructor stated, these were the, uh, their words, that it, um, every round that you do, or every three rounds that you do of the breath work, and the, the hold, and then the inhale, and then you let it go, is equivalent to a workout, literally giving your body a workout. And I'm like, huh, come again? And I'm like, oh, this makes sense because I feel like my body's going through the ringer right now, you know, and depending on how many rounds you do, like it gets super intense, but you know, basically that's what you were touching on though. Like I want to go back to that sexual transmutation. Uh, Napoleon Hill said it best in think and grow rich. Uh, and I haven't even read the damn book yet, but I got the book and he talks about sexual transmutation. And I believe that that's what NOFAP is about is, transmuting that sexual energy to use it for what you want to do in your life, what you want to manifest in your life, what kind of lifestyle you want to live, you know, but there's, um, there's a lot of things that come in with, you know, the NoFap lifestyle, like attraction to women. Uh, you have better testosterone levels. Your sleep is a lot better. Your anxiety and depression starts to go away. I really looked into it. You know, I was kind of an advocate for NoFap. Um, and I still am to a degree. Um, it's not really what my channel's about, but I do videos on it because I think it ties into, uh, the masculine lifestyle, like a man diligently practices that, you know, 
Uh, but it also depends on your lifestyle. Maybe you're the kind of guy that likes to go out and meet women and do that. Or maybe you're the kind of guy that's going to be like, well, let me build my empire. I'll let the women come to me, you know, kind of deal. Uh, it just depends on your lifestyle. It depends on your scenarios that you're thinking of or talking about. Uh, some guys want to have that intimate connection, that relationship. Um, that's something that I want. So I'm not going out and just mindlessly just being a degenerate and throwing out my seed in random places, you know, and you always risk, uh, you always risk the, the risk of, uh, you know, catching something or getting a girl pregnant too, if you're not smart with it either. So there's that concept too, that you got to think about. So, but the nofap lifestyle can tie into that as well. It just depends on how, how far of a degree you want to take it. Cause some guys take it in different degrees, you know, they take it in different levels. It depends on their lifestyle, depends on your lifestyle, what you're about, you know? This is the thing, man, like, there's such a problem, you know? I remember going to, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be real, man. There were times where I sit with girls, I couldn't get it up. There'd be times where I sit with girls and- um, Oh, wait, the uh, the ED? Yes. From, okay, yeah, go ahead and talk about that. From a note at perspective though. Okay. You know, P-I-E-D. I'm pretty sure you said you experienced this yourself. But I've been in so many, um, especially in my about 19 to 20, um, being with multiple, multiple girls and not being able to get it up. They would cry. They would think they're not good enough. All of these situations, man. And I even remember one time, man. Wow. I even remember one time it was got to the, to the, like I said, okay, this is, I have a fucking problem. I have a problem. Yeah. Who problem? I didn't think I've even told this to anyone, but. Now I'm going to share it to the world. <laughs> well, but, I mean, if you want to, it's up to you, man. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. But I got to the bed, the right. worst point for me that I got to the point where, um, this is when I realized that a problem, man, I done this had, I've just had intercourse with this girl mm-hmm. that bust my nuts up in her, butt. um, <laughs> she fell asleep, bro. Um, and I said to myself, okay, I'm going on, I'm going to go on the sites. I'm going to go on the X-rated sites after I was with her right next to her. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I realized, okay, oh, man. you've got a problem. You've got to fix this shit. You can't be serious right now. You're really wanting to go onto this shit because your mind is like wanting to go onto that because it knows like the dopamine hit from that is like much better than sex itself. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. You got a problem. <laughs> you got a, oh, you got a problem. So you need to fix that. And yeah. Gotcha, man. Yeah, dude. No, I, I talked to, um, I talked to some guys that, uh, did the same exact thing that you did. They got done getting it on, but they went into the room next door, popped up in the laptop, looked at the porn that did it for them. Then they could go to sleep. It's so messed up how pornography has really tricked our minds. And I could also speak in an, evolutionary theory that our minds were just not ready for this kind of thing to come out but it tricks our minds so much to the point to where your body your mind will crave so much different kinds of novelty not for the novelty itself but for the high that you can get from it which can combines uh it combines the i'll just talk about the emotions it combines the emotions of excitement and thrill and anxiety but then that turns into pleasure because your neuroplasticity, like your neuroplasticity is so malleable at that point, especially when you do it at a young age, that you're feeling the thrill and the anxiety of like the enjoyment of looking at this stuff and getting off on it, that it switches your brain chemistry to, to a degree to where like, this is pleasurable and sex isn't anymore. Like normal sex isn't anymore. So true. That's so how much true. of a, that is how much of a mind fuck it is. <laughs> And that's why our, our brains and our society just is not ready for this kind of stuff. And it was never ready for it on, on an evolutionary perspective. The human mind was not meant to look at pixels on the screen. You know, we weren't meant to ancestrally even, I'll, I'll even talk about this too. We're not meant to stay in homes like this, talking to each other on cameras, you know, uh, having this kind of comfort, you know, ancestrally we were, we were built to be hunters. We were built to, live out in nature, live close to nature, be out in the open, the fresh air, 
living as close to nature as we used to back then. Because the further we get away from that, the further we actually descend and we actually get sick and we get unhealthy, you know. Uh, the phones can even be a problem with just constant screen scrolling and looking at that screen, damaging your eyes, giving those dopamine hits too. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. Yeah. Uh, social media, you know. <laughs> we're all guilty. We're all guilty. Mm -hmm. Maybe watching too much YouTube, you know, but we're YouTubers, so. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, those are some examples I wanted to throw out there, though. Um, but, yeah, and that, that that's what it comes back to, though, man. Like, um, I met guys that were literally, you know, with these girls, physically right next to these girls, going to the room next door, popping open their laptop or hitting their desktop and uh, getting off on porn because... And you know what's funny, bro? What's crazy? It for what's crazy? These guys, some of them don't even realize that they've got a problem. Exactly. I think it's okay to be like that. It's like, this is how much damage it is doing to people's lives, relationships. Absolutely. People. Objectifying women, which I still still am dealing with today. Oh you yeah. Catching up with a girl, just just for what? what, what are, what's your intention? Oh, just to sleep with her. Really? Like, come on, man. Like you're just lusting. Mm. You're lusting. It takes many forms, man. Yeah, lust takes many forms. It's like when you, you got to come from a place of, you got to have fun. Like, you know, you got to have fun sometimes. Sure. But it's of also course. like, uh, you can become a slave to it, right? Mm -hmm. You can. I was. Definitely, man. And I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't struggle with lust. I do. You know. I do, man. And uh, you definitely want to, yeah, you definitely don't want to make it a thing where, where it's controlling your life. You know, you, you got to get, you got to take those reins back again. You got to get those horses under control, you know? <laughs> um, otherwise the horses are going to run off the trail and tip the, tip the carriage, you know? That's right. That's, that's how, right. that's how far out of control it can get. It, that's how far out of control it can get. But yeah, most guys don't even realize that, oh, this isn't a problem. This is just normal everyday life. Oh man. No, it's not. It takes such a mental toll on your psyche how you view women, how you view your relationships. And that's why a lot of guys are failing in the relationships. They don't have that drive that I was talking about, right? That, that, uh, that initial pull to go out and meet girls. Mm -hmm. There's no need to. What, what, what's the point when you got your girlfriend right here in your pocket? It doesn't matter. Right. She's on the screen 24 seven. Exactly. <laughs> no, man, I totally get that. Um, it was some things that Gabe Dean touched on as well from uh, your brain on porn. Uh, talking about how porn is a mental health or turning into a mental health issue. Uh, you can find the video if you look them up, but it's uh, rebootnation.org. Um, YouTube channel is rebootnation.org. Um, anybody tuning in, I highly recommend you guys check out that site. Um, Cause he had the same exact problem that you did, man, with PED. Went to go sleep with a pretty girl. Could not get it up whatsoever, man. Like years down the road talking about that novelty and stuff. As soon as he clicked on the mouse and the websites, brain lit up and he got, you know, hard. And uh, then he realized, okay, what is this? And after he did that search, he found hundreds, if not, we could even say a thousand forums at this time. This was like in the early 2000s, mid 2000s of guys asking questions and like looking for answers for what uh, P I P I E D is, you know, and, uh, dude, he got, he got notoriety for it, man. Lots of notoriety for it, but he fixed his problem and it took no fab to fix it. Semen retention, things like that, you know? So, all right, get into the next topic. Red pill, MGTOW. Maybe we could talk about both of them at the same time. Because uh, you kind of talk about that in your coaching business, correct? And I know that you've made a lot of content based mm. around it. Uh, do you involve that in your coaching business? And kind how did you, of, and maybe how did you come about Red Pill MGTOW? Same thing with the similar retention and NoFap, man. Mm. You know, um, I don't talk about it in my coaching business. Okay. I feel like I started my YouTube channel pre-coaching business. Oh, okay. So now I've built that channel off youtube red pill content okay that's been sitting there so i'm just still 
blasting other content from that. But um, I haven't talked about in that in my coaching business. Obviously, some of the stuff that I apply does apply in that, in that sense. But in saying that, man, I've learned a lot from Red Pill. I've learned a lot from going my own way. Mm. And it's really just the practice of breaking free from the female validation. You know, you got to break away from all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, if you're not going down that, if you're going down that path and all you're looking for is a relationship, I think guys should be, you know, wary of, and be aware at least, be aware at least of like the pros and cons of marriage. Hmm. They should be very wary of that stuff, man. Like, you know, you've got so many examples out there um, of guys just getting their life screwed up, man. Or should we remember watching this guy or hearing from this guy you know, he said, do not get married from his experience. He's talking from his experience. Don't, don't get married. He said it was hell. He said he would rather run through a bloody towards guns in World War II than do oh that shit. Oh my God. <laughs> the most painful, you know, bad experience, worst experience he's ever had. And he never wants to go through that shit again. He doesn't want any other one to go through it as well. Hmm. So it's important for people to understand that. I feel like it's important for guys to understand uh, female nature. And then it, again, it serves its place. It serves its place. You know, like I say, this whole idea, we've got so many content creators out there right now that are talking about the same shit. That all sounds like copy and paste to me. Um, and I'm speaking some big facts right now. I know that in my fucking, in my heart that I'm speaking big facts. You've got the same guys out there, get on your purpose. Millions of content creators. And it's good that they're spreading awareness. Sure. But again, like, Copy and paste. It's like, speak your truth. Speak your truth. Because there's so many uh, young content creators coming into the game. And like myself, you and myself. And now you got to be able to evolve. Fuse the, fuse the beliefs into your life. Just like anything. You know, you, you fuse spirituality within your life. You, you, you fuse the red pill. Uh, knowledge into your life you fuse christianity whatever religion if you're religious into your life mm -hmm. to live throughout this life you know you fuse it so yeah um that's a whole whole other topic man um which i'm sure would have to would have to catch up for another one for that one <laughs> think so you can't touch on it a little bit what's that oh you can't touch on like red pill and MGTOW a little bit because i know that that's what you talk about as far yeah. as uh, your content goes, uh, would you say, aside from men going their own way, like to a degree, as far as the aspect of marriage goes, I mean, I know that it's talking about getting on your purpose. I feel like that there's kind of like a lot of negative, negative connotations with MGTOW, but at the same time, I take just the positive aspects that come from it. And I see, okay, that's good. You know, those parts of MGTOW are good, but not the rest of it. I, I, I almost want to say it because all the, all the MGTOW stuff that I've seen, as far as that goes, it's, it, it's almost as bad as feminism is what I want to say, you know, if I can say that. So uh, in a nutshell, though, I, I think it's important, like what we've been talking about from the very beginning, that men get on their purpose, men embrace the masculinity, embrace the masculine spirit you know one here's one thing i could talk about as far as red pill goes um i see many aspects of red pill but here's one example that i will give of red pill the biggest difference between men and women is that men are able to control their emotions women thrive off of their emotions men are meant to be kind of that solid stoic emotionless person you know um it's like he's in the rowboat and the woman's the ocean they got to be able to bail out the water and set the sail again in the middle of a hurricane you know she can sink you so many times but you got to keep floating back up to the surface um those are relationship dynamics uh kind of with red pill what i will say is this uh this was the best story that was given to me and I actually got this from a content creator, but he talked about how men are able to control their emotions to a degree to the point that like when 
We stormed the beaches of Normandy. I'll use this example, some, some world history. Boys were going onto those shores getting shot by Germans. 16, 17, 18 year old kids. Maybe, maybe even as young as 15, I want to say. When the men that let their emotions fly got on that beach, they instantly got shot and killed. Their main primary focus is, was, is the mission, the mission, and they teach you that in the military. But funny enough, this similar mission is kind of like similar with men being on their purpose, right? So when the few men or the one man decides to, okay, there's blood, there's guts, there's men dying all around me, I'm trapped, I'm scared, they give into that fear, they give into that anxiety, they just freak out, you know, when they control that, when they say, okay, I got to set my emotions aside, they learn to set, they learn to set their emotions aside and deal with it later. We're, we're capable of doing that. I'm going to take the hill, the young man thinks, thinks to himself, yeah, there's blood, there's guts. My brothers are dying. My brother just got shot down, down the shore, you know, physically, like family were even put in the same regiments, platoons and stuff. Um, but he, he had to make a decision. They make a decision in that moment to set my emotions aside. I'm going to go ahead and take this hill so that way we can win the war. We can win the battle, right? And what does the young man do? The young man sets his emotions aside. He deals with it later. He goes, he kills a couple of Germans. They take the hill. The rest of the regime comes up because of that one man that decided to set his emotions aside. And getting back to what I just said too, men and women, uh, Emotions affect men and women differently. You know, we deal with that in the after effect. Like, if we're going to break down and cry after seeing all of that, going through all of that, yeah, that's going to happen later on. But what were we able to do in the moment at the time that was needed? We were able to set our emotions aside and take the hill. We were able to set our emotions aside, take down the enemy, and complete the mission. You know? Um... And so that's what this guy talked about in the red pill form is that when we set our emotions aside and we take our emotions out of it and we become objective, we fix problems better that way, you know? And maybe that's a little vague as far as like, maybe the word objective is wrong, but what I'm trying to say is, is like, when you take your emotions out of it, you, you see it more of a perspective when we talked about that today. You know, it's all perspective, perception, and you can think to yourself, well, I'm not going to get overreactive and emotional and I'm going to put my fist through a wall. You know, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to be relaxed. I'm going to let her yell at me and see what, what happens next. You know, you take your emotions out of it. Men are able to do that. Women are not. So that's some red pill uh, information that I got. Mm, female nature. There's so much to dive into, man. Mm-hmm. There's so much... Um around it and one guy that i really feel like it's really shaping the mold right now is um coach greg Ad- Pro- coach greg adams coach rick adams coach greg adams man you should check him out he talks a lot about feminism he talks a lot about all these things he talks mm-hmm. a lot about all of this and um because he doesn't put the stigma and the label on it just mm-hmm. like as you put with the right wing or left wing as soon as you put that label on it mm-hmm. what happens your beliefs feel attacked as soon as you put the acronym MGTOW on, it's like, again, people's beliefs feel, okay, I, I don't like that term, so I'm not going not gonna to fucking listen to anything this guy says. Right. So basically what he's done is put free agent lifestyle oh. up on the thing. But in saying that, man, it serves its place for guys being able to get away from the female validation trap, to focus on themselves, to focus on their finances, to focus on becoming better physically, spiritually, mentally. Mm-hmm learn to love yourself without the need for validation i truly feel like you need to come to peace with yourself in order to have a relationship i feel like you truly need to come to terms with the the dangers that are out there inside modern dating i feel like a lot of men should see the fact that how social media is affecting dating these days i feel like it's very important for guys to see all these things because if they're not aware of this then they're going to come to things like black pill. And I'm not saying uh, I'm not going to shit on black pill because it serves its place for some people, sure. but people need to understand that the fact that the pools in today's 
dating landscape is the fact that women have such a big pool now because they've got things like dating apps, Instagram, social media. And now guys like yeah. average guys, their pool starts to shrink. Okay, cool. What happens after that when social media advances more? They become dependent on, they, they become almost not an option to women. Mm. Almost not an option. And this is where Blackpool's coming in because these guys that are down on the four out of 10, hate using uh, numbers, but the guys that aren't very good looking, they class themselves as incels. Oh. They've come to a place where they don't even have any options anymore. And it's truly sad because they feel like this is the only way for them because they've tried, they've tried the PUA, they've tried the Red Bull dating, they've tried all these things, but it hasn't worked for these guys, you know, and there's some truth to it. And it's going to show that how the dating landscape is moving is the fact that these social media apps, these women that have countless options, so much options on their dating apps, uh, Facebook, social media, they can, um, see the guys that are liking their photos. You've got things like OnlyFans these days. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that. <laughs> Woman's pool for the dating landscape is opening up. Okay, cool. What happens when it opens up? Well, I don't like that Jimmy guy over there. Cool. Throw him out. Mm, that Chad guy's pretty cool. Keep him in my pool. Mm. I like that Tyrone guy. We're using our terms here. <laughs> but <laughs> you're, you're, you're literally in this pool where she's just going to, she gets to pick and choose. So if you're a guy that doesn't understand this game of the new dating landscape that's coming, if you don't understand that she has guys, countless options. Hmm. I feel like guys, it's very important to understand this because if you don't, then you don't understand the shift of the, the, the dating landscape in today's world, man, it's going to be very tough for you to find um, a good relationship. Hmm. It's going to be tough for you to understand, um, if you don't and you tie down one of these girls that are like this and you end up marrying her, you're going to end up having a negative future, you know, having to go through kids, risk losing your kids and not being able to see your kids. No man wants to go through that, man. No man wants to go through that. So when you come up and bring these, this, this, this truth out here and you got to speak it, it's like MGTOW serves its place. It's like guys need to know this shit. Like they truly do. Because if you don't really understand the dating landscape and the modern mechanics today around that, mm. then you're truthfully, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be sad for you because you're gonna keep running into the same problem. You're gonna keep wondering why does this uh, woman keep leaving me? It's because social media. It's because women are hypergamous by nature. Our, our society would not advance without it. So hypergamy true. is a thing because if we are not, if she's not constantly seeking for the next best thing then why would guys need to compete? Why would guys need to build their wealth? Why would guys need to build these empires? It's, it's, it's just a no brainer, man. Like guys need to understand that with social media and technology these days, and as it advances, that you're becoming a less of an option if you don't choose to stand up and really understand that going your own way is an option to really work on yourself, improve on yourself so that you can at least, you know, have options. But to, to be honest, man, if you're not working on yourself and you're not on your purpose and you want to get into a relationship, you're doomed. You're like, I truthfully feel like you're going to be left behind because as soon as I started improving on my life, as soon as I started to work on myself and I started to go away from that female validation trap, what happens? Oh, all of a sudden I'm an option. All of a sudden you want, you want to jump on this, this schlong. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's, 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 That's it's, mean. It's, a, it's an interesting world out there, man, uh, with technology and how it's shifting the data landscape. So that's where I come from in my perspective of MGTOW, man. Mm. Understanding that you, 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 may, you really need to start improving yourself because if you don't, to sum this up, it's going to be a grim world for you, man. And you'll probably end up turning to things like Blackpool. And there's been stats and statistics done on this where, like, you know, the incels and people not getting laid is actually increasing. Mm -hmm. And what does this mean for the world? maybe more destruction in the world because people are using their creative energy to destruct and take things down. Like you've seen all these stories with the incels, like shooting up schools and movie theaters yeah. and shit like, like it's crazy. I've seen it and heard it. Yeah. I have, uh, I didn't really know exactly what an incel was until I like looked up an interview that this lady did with a guy and he was, I think talking to some friends that were all online 
and uh, things like that. Uh, that concept is interesting, but I mean, to a degree to where it is degrading for the individual themselves, because really, at the end of the day, they're not getting any better. And they're just degrading further and further, further into that kind of black pit, I feel like. So in order for, I think, these incels to come out of that, they got to get rid of that mindset, first of all, not say that they're never going to date women because they're not good enough. And then they get off on that. I guess that's a thing. And they got to take and make some initial steps to get better in their lives. Whether, you know, just despite their social anxiety or whatever it may be, not being attracted to women, they got to better themselves in some way. 100%. Or some of them are, yeah, <laughs> you Let's know, say some one of them. Thing. Or say that, one thing. Wait. Oh, go for it. The, the guys that, um, with the black pool, um, mm. it's interesting, man, because everything you're saying, there will be this massive block. Like we're talking about that block, you know, they'll, they'll have that black because big tower, they have that block because they're going to left wing. Oh. They'll have that block against all that stuff, all the purpose, all that stuff. They won't want to take that on because they've already tried it. They've already implemented it in their life and it didn't work for them. Oh. So now they've come to this black pool ideology. Well, this is all the media they're being fed on YouTube. I'll just yeah. be fed black pool, black pool, black pool. This is all that we're watching. And it's going right. to validate this idea in their own head that all these things up here are just, oh, this is just my life. It's just, this is all the media that I've been fed looks matter the most i'm just not good enough and now i'm a failure hmm. and uh these guys are think resorting to things like sex dolls things like that they're pretty much given up man it's um it's a sad life but yeah. i've always tried to understand it hmm. always tried to understand it but um like we say you can improve your life you can become more of an option um and some guys just got up harder than others and that's just the cold truth man if you're yeah. less than average, you're going to have a very, 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 very tough time 2020 beyond. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. And that sucks. I hate to say it. And I'm even talking for average guys too. I truly believe that if you're not, if, if you're an average guy and you're not improving on yourself, it's going to be very tough for you too. Mm -hmm. But you've got to improve your life if you want to have relationships, if you want to have options. You know, not just be tied to one girl and please don't leave me because that's unhealthy. Relationships don't work that way. And yeah. this is where feminism comes in also because, you know, they're pushing this idea for masculine uh, men not to be masculine and like it's killing toxic masculinity and it's like creating feminine men. It's like, damn, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's damaging society. Um, and yeah, man, it's, 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 um, there's extremists, right? You got extremists on MGTOW, you got extremists on vegans, you got extremists, <laughs> you got an extreme white wing, right wing. Mm -hmm. um, extremists. And there's also the healthy balance in between each of those things, right? Like there's like a healthy balance in between each of those ideas, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why it's, it's always good and important to have like a, a guest, unbiased or biased, um, at least understand the other point of view because. People need to, it's just that block, man. Your beliefs feel attacked, mm. you know? Yeah. Well, and I had no idea that that, um, uh, yeah, I actually didn't realize this about black pill. Like I actually didn't know what black pill was until you just told me. So I didn't know yeah. that it tied into the incel world. I'm like, this is, oh, this is what I speak about on my channel, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. It's, it's crazy. Eh? It's, it's, it's insane. It is. It, it it's is like, insane. like where do you, where's the world going to be in, in, in 20 years? Where's the world going to be in 20 years from now? like how bad is it going to be for guys mm. and this is where MGTOW comes in it's like okay cool well i'm just not going to play the game because well until things change and this is why um the free agent lifestyle and people like that like to travel because you're meeting new women um but they believe that the single life um you know having a relationship having these sorts of things especially marriage is just a big no for them just with the way things are and that sort of aspect but then there's also the fact of the matter of having a relationship and um just being aware you know being aware of these sorts of things and the risk out there if you yeah. got to get into this because you guys need to understand this man in today's age it's just it's change it's not it's not your what your mum was telling you or your dad was telling you it's yeah. it's a different whole different game now you've got 
she's got a whole list waiting here, man. Mm-hmm. And like her hypergamous nature is just within her DNA to, to make these sorts of options. So I feel like it's just um, very interesting where the dating landscape is going to go. And like I said, 20 years from now, man, it's going to be very interesting. It will be. Sad and good for some. Yeah, sad and good for some. No, I think that's a, that's a good ending point right there. Dang. What a crazy world we live in, huh? <laughs> uh, Kruger, I think, uh, I think this would be a good, way, good place for us to stop. But um, and how long has it gone on for? <laughs> uh, I want to say a good forty-five minutes. Maybe I'm lying to you. Maybe it's about an hour and thirty. No, know. no, we start, we started recording at uh, three, bro, three o'clock. Yeah, we started recording about oh, six my time. So six. Seven, oh, did we? Eight. Dude, we're probably well into like an hour and thirty. I want to say almost two hours. <laughs> I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say almost three bro from like I was, what we were speaking before but yeah seriously oh man dude we might be i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll wrap anyway. this up though <laughs> we'll wrap this up though man a bonus uh, for the viewers eh? yeah no this will be good we all got we, we we got some good stuff man this was a good talk so thank you for doing this today man i really appreciate it thank you for doing, doing this tonight my time uh but kruger you got a patreon page right yeah man we'll chuck that all in the link and down in the in in the description of your yeah your, uh, no your... i will put that in the link description uh what other social medias did you want to put out or uh plug in to end this man, uh, you can check out my youtube channel if you're if you liked what i talked about just there i talk about that all the time man um very passionate about that um in a sense because it's very important to understand you know mm-hmm. if you're a guy you've got to self-improve and that's where i come in and teach you the ways to self-improve because you want to be an option in, in the future you gotta get on a purpose. Um, so that's my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, don't talk too much about that on my Instagram, but Instagram, you can get me on Instagram. And that's where I'm talking about more about, you know, I'm actually truly helping people in a sense that freeing them from the average Joe lifestyle, because mm. at the end of the day, if you're coming from that place where you're at a job, you don't like, you've got no purpose. You don't know what your direction is. Maybe you're an aspiring entrepreneur. Maybe you are an entrepreneur. You want to scale your business. And this is where I come in and help you, you know, live the life on your terms, unlock your potential, most importantly. Right. And when you unlock your potential and um, you're able to impact others, my, my whole, my whole purpose is to, to impact and unlock people's potential. And that's, that's what I want to do. And the, like I said, that's why I got the tattoo. I'm all in on the shit. And um, yeah, just, if, if, just check out my Instagram and just follow along with what I'm doing and, yeah, and that uh, name, uh, name of your IG handle, Foundational Man, right? Nah, nah, I changed that, so it's just my name. Okay, Kruger Burton. You got it. So you guys can find him on Instagram at Kruger Burton. YouTube channel, Kruger Burton, and his Patreon page. Support him with some charity, everybody. Kruger Burton. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to the LJ Effect podcast, guys. And if you would like to see any exclusive episodes with me and Kruger Burton, you can check us out on my Patreon page, The LJ Effect. Exclusive episodes and content will be put on there. At, uh, and it will be at the low cost of $5, as much as a Starbucks coffee here in the States. <laughs> Starting out as my uh, starting patrons. But yeah, guys, go ahead and check out the page. I'll leave a link for you guys down below. I'll leave all of Kruger Burton's links for social medias and channel down in the description below, as well as pay, as his Patreon page. And uh, Kruger, again, thank you, mate. It's been a pleasure. We did it. Pleasure, man. Yeah. And guys, if you have not yet, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in the next episode. If you made it this far, you best be hitting that subscribe button (laughs) for sure man hey kruger thank you man take care you too man